tell you, he's in here. I said, he's in here. Oh, my God. Put them all up my legs. Not about y'all, but I came to have some church in this place. Y'all don't know what I see in this place today. Honey, I don't care what you came to this conference with, you ain't taking it back home. You, see, the reason why you can't take it back home because the yoke-destroying anointing is in this place. And what you don't realize is that every seat that you're sitting in, it was predestined before the foundation of the world that you be sitting right where you're sitting, that this conference be here. That's why the enemy has fought it. Because you know what? Every time you walk in the door, God said another deliverance, another breakthrough. Oh, my God, you don't even know what God has broken off your life. But when you get back home, you're going to know that there's been a change in your life, said the Holy Ghost. Now let me just, let me just, let me just help somebody for a minute. I'm not an evangelist. I'm a prophet. I'm not an evangelist. Which means when I open up my mouth to say something. <sighs> I'm not just saying something to make you feel good. I'm not just up here trying to entertain you or impress you. I said that the Holy Ghost said that whatever you came in here with this year is the last year for it. It is over. This devil that you see now, you will see no more, said the Holy Ghost. You have passed the test. You have been through the storm. You have been through the rain. Now the Lord is saying it's time to rejoice. anything right now if your hands is up if you feel goosebumps let me tell you why the Holy Ghost doesn't come to shout you he doesn't come to make you feel good he doesn't come to lift your hands up but know this when the Holy Ghost comes upon you he is changing something about you oh my God when the Holy Ghost come upon you, there's something in your life that used to be there that will not be there anymore. When the Holy Ghost comes upon you, it is a sign of the Spirit to let you know that God has said, I'm here. I'm in the midst of your situation. I'm in the midst of your trouble. And I've come to solve every problem. Touch three people on your way down and said, this is the last year. Last year. It's the last year. It's the last year. I ain't taking no more. I done already paid the price. It's the last year. I done been through enough mess. I done stood the lies. It's the last year. I'm going to get up off my back. I'm going to wipe the tears from my eyes. I'm going to start jumping and shouting because I know it's the last year. It's the last year for mess. It's the last year for confusion. It's the last year for discouragement. Come on, somebody. Oh, God's dropping something else in this church. It's the last year that the enemy... On my way here today, I can feel this ministry moving and it seemed like it looked like ropes or something that was holding back something that God is trying to do in this ministry but you ain't seen nothing yet this ain't even the final building it's bigger than this and God said this is the last year after this year, you will see phenomenal growth leaps and bounds. I hear the Holy Ghost send 50,000. Oh, y'all ain't seeing what I'm seeing. And because you're in here, your situation is about to expand. Your money is about to expand. I don't care where you came from. You're standing on holy grounds. God set you up to walk in this building so that change can take place. 
Everybody said it was a setup. Y'all ain't saying it like you mean it. He couldn't bless you where you were. You couldn't get it where you were. You couldn't get it at home. You couldn't get it in California. You couldn't get it in Texas. You couldn't get it in, come on, somebody. But God said, I brought you here. I designed this place. I've sanctified the crown. And everything that you need is in here today. 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 I don't want to get ahead of myself, but I feel something in this place. I honor this precious woman of God. I honor this powerful man of God. And today, as a woman in ministry, I lay my gift in the realm of the spirit at the feet of the apostle and the bishop of this house. I submit my anointing under his anointing. <laughs> Some of y'all think y'all got your own anointing. Your anointing has to come from somewhere. Anybody that's operating in ministry has to get an anointing from somebody. Being in your prayer closet ain't going to make you powerful. Oh, my God. 21-day fast, you might as well eat if you can't submit. Y'all ain't saying nothing in here. You can say what the Holy Ghost is trying to bring under arrest is... This wild spirit, this wild anointing, untamed, uncontrolled, unaccounted for, no accountability to anybody because we think God calls us. But the Lord does and no one is trying to. And I think the warfare all of these years has been where do women belong? And we think that the brethren have tried to suppress what God has called us to do. But you have to understand something that the Lord revealed to me one time. He said, he said, the majority of the time is when you see a woman. And this ain't the lesson. This ain't going to cost you nothing. I just got to go over here right quick. I'm coming back. A lot of times when you see women who are being what they called held back and it's because the man of god is not you he's holding back it's that unsubmitted spirit that he's trying not to allow to get loose to destroy the congregation like a cancer y'all ain't saying nothing and how can we submit to god when we cannot submit to the man of god Okay, it's getting ready to be rough in here. I'm glad you went ahead and shouted before I got up. Because we need to understand that God is about to do some things. And there's a birthing process that comes along with anything that we are called to do from God. And it's not going to be because somebody puts them all on you. And give you a little word of prophecy. But see, when you are in sync with what God is saying in your life and what he's doing in your life, you really don't need anybody to prophesy to you. Oh, yes, I'm, 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 just let me, just let me say that. 
You really don't need anybody to give you a word from the Lord. When you are in right relationship with God, all they can do is come and confirm what God has already said to you. And see, what gets us off track is what I call parking lot prophecies. Your friends and people that see you to be a wonder and somebody great, and they get you in the parking lot, and they start telling you how great you're going to be and what all God has called you to be. But see, one thing I found out, and that is the true calling of the Lord is that women become consecrated. Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing. See, up here is not the glory. Standing in the pulpit is not where the glory is. Y'all ain't saying nothing. But see, where you get honor at is at 6 a.m. prayer in the morning. Y'all ain't going to talk back now. Where you get honor at is being on time for church. Where you get honor at is not coming late all dressed up like you be and you be and you want somebody to see you. Where you get honor at is humbling yourself and being broken by the power of God. been broken. Well, I'm not going, I'm not going, I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to join the choir. I'm not going to saying, I don't want to be bothered. All I want to do is come to church and go home. I don't want to be bothered with folk. I don't want nobody in your bit, in my business. I don't want nobody messing with me. No, no, no. That ain't how you get broken. You can't get broken on your seat. You can't get broken sitting there and just enjoying the worship service. See, let me help you. The way you get broken is when you join the choir and they give you a song and you go out of town and come back and they don't took your song. And when your attitude get bad, you're being broken because God would allow people, people, people to mess your button so you can find out what is left in you from the world. There's still some uncrossed seeds. Yo, can I just teach it here tonight? I, I don't want to preach. Can I just teach? See, there's still residue that's left on us from the world. There's still stuff, stuff that's down in us that we don't know is there. Yeah, we put on a good front. Hallelujah. Thank you, G. Ah, na, 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 na. Until somebody pushed the wrong button, you don't know that you are still cussed until somebody pushed the wrong button. Now, I ain't going to talk about y'all. I'm going to talk about me. If I talk about y'all, y'all going to say I'm talking about you. So I'm just going to talk about me. Saved, sanctified, preaching. And the Lord is saying, still not done with you. But I'm anointed, so what? I'm not done with you, not your anointing. Your gift, your calling, and you are three different things. Y'all ain't saying nothing. What you're able to do under the anointing does not mean that's you. Because if there is a lying spirit that is in you, I don't care if you can sing like a mockingbird and tap dance while you're singing, you still got to be purged. See, that's why we got people that, 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 that say, God called me, God called me, God called me, and we put them in position. And after a while, you see them rocking and rolling. You know why? Because they didn't get purged in the foundation of their walk. Understand what I'm saying? They didn't let nobody go in and dig out all the junk that's still there. You know how you still see Willie and you still jump in your stomach and there's something about him. Y'all ain't going to say nothing tonight that you still get goosebumps. All of that got to be purged out of you because God cannot trust you. Some of y'all are saying right now, well, why, why, why am I still going through this? Why am I still, I'm trying to get out, and the Lord said, you don't want to get out yet. 
He said, I got to, I got to, I got to allow, let me wait a second to come off this pulpit for a moment. I got to, I got to allow you to stay right there until you stop vacillating with the fact that I want to be free. And then when a the good revival come, you want to be free. And then after the revival leave, you don't want to be free no more. Y'all ain't saying nothing. But see, God got to get you to the point where you hate it so bad that when you see him coming, you can't stand his guts, that you hate the very fact of sin. And the problem with women in this hour, we don't hate sin. We are too busy being in competition with each other. That's why the love connection cannot happen. Okay, God, God gave me a scripture. I'm going to read it. This ain't homiletics. Because we ain't talking about Daniel. We're talking about you. We ain't talking about Peter and Paul. We ain't talking about John the Baptist. We talking about where are we? Why is it that we got a church full of people and there's no power? Y'all don't like me today, it's okay. That ain't no power because we too busy fighting for seats and fighting for positions and fighting. Who looked the best? Look at my hairstyle. This is the way you line your eyes. Honey, that's fearlessness. Where is the anointing? him this morning say to me when I got upset the captive free y'all ain't saying nothing yeah well you know I got I want I want to be used by God you ain't ready and that's why the anointing is so low and that's why the pastors have to almost get up like cheerleaders every Sunday and get you back to where you was last week and it's because you know what soon as you leave out of here you ain't ready because I'm gonna tell you something when you got the anointing and you really got the Holy Ghost the Holy Ghost is a leader it's a teacher it's a guider oh y'all ain't saying nothing ain't nobody gotta tell you that your dress is too short when you got the Holy Ghost Sit down. Say, everybody in here, sit down. Cause we go, we go, we gonna get. Can we talk? Can we talk, girls? You ought to get a clue. You the only one coming in here with your skirt up to your neck. Look around you. Ain't nobody else dressing like that. I can understand you coming for the first time, and we're working with you. But after you get to know God, after you've been here six months, after you've been here two years, you just in your flesh. You looking for a man, and don't nobody want you. Not a real Holy Ghost sanctified man. Let me help you with something. God told me said to the Lord, I want a husband. And God said to me, a husband is not going to solve your lust problem. Is anybody here? Y'all, is anybody here? No, no, no. Getting married don't solve a lust problem. Because when you got a spirit of lust, you can get married and six months later, you'll still be lusting. Y'all ain't saying nothing in here today. The Lord began to say, but he said, he said, the body of Christ must be circumcised. You know what that means? That means, I looked it up, it means to cut away unnecessary flesh that can hinder production. My God. Oh no, I'm not saying everything is a sin, but the Bible said, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that does so easily beset you. I don't know about y'all gonna talk about me. There's certain things I just can't wear. It put a spirit on me. outfits I can't put on. It make me feel hoish. There's certain things I just can't do. It brings another spirit on me. Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing. And the reason why we don't mind, because we really don't want to be saved. Equipping 
her with greater insight and sensitivity towards the needs of God's people. Her life and ministry bears witness to the mercy, the grace, and the love of the most all-powerful, almighty God. Would you receive now, prophetess, Juanita Bynum, the prophet of the hour. Why don't you put those same hands together for the Holy Ghost? Y'all still sound like y'all clapping for the President of the United States. I said the Holy Ghost. You sound like you may be clapping for your pastor. I said the Holy Ghost. I believe if you clap your hands for the Holy Ghost, we'll disturb the work of the devil in your life. You don't know that when you start clapping your hands, you confuse the enemy. And today the Holy Ghost is in this place. He's come to make change. He's come to break yokes. And if I were you, I wouldn't stand there clapping all cute and trying to dig be dignified and trying to impress somebody. If I were you, I would tell somebody, you don't know what it took me to get in this place. You don't know the devil didn't want me here. And now that I'm here, I'm getting ready to bless God with all of my might, with all of my strength, with all of my breath. Oh, come on, somebody make the devil out of a liar. He said, all oh, we are is cutie pies. But let's let the devil know that we are women packed with power and the anointing. I wish I had a church in here tonight that didn't mind shouting and giving praise to God. Come on, shout glory. Come on, shout glory. Glory. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, you can take your seat. I tell you, he's in here. I said he's in here. Oh my God. Put them all up my legs. Know about y'all, but I came to have some church in this place. Y'all don't know what I see in this place today. Honey, I don't care what you came to this conference with, you ain't taking it back home. You, see, the reason why you can't take it back home because the yoke-destroying anointing is in this place. And what you don't realize is that every seat that you're sitting in, it was predestined before the foundation of the world that you be sitting right where you're sitting, that this conference be here. That's why the enemy has fought it. Because you know what? Every time you walk in the door, God said another deliverance, another breakthrough. Oh, my God, you don't even know what God has broken off your life. But when you get back home, you're going to know that there's been a change in your life. Set the Holy Ghost. Now, let me just, let me just, let me just help somebody for a minute. I'm not an evangelist. I'm a prophet. I'm not an evangelist. Which means when I open up my mouth to say something. <laughs> I'm not just saying something to make you feel good. I'm not just up here trying to entertain you or impress you. I said that the Holy Ghost said that whatever you came in here with this year is the last year for it. It is over. This devil that you see now, you will see no more, said the Holy Ghost. You have passed the test. You have been through the storm. You have been through the rain. Now the Lord is saying it's time to rejoice. And be ye lifted up, ye everlasting. Oh, here come the King of Glory. Oh God. Oh my God. Your hands. If you feel anything right now, if your hands is up. 
if you feel goosebumps, let me tell you why. The Holy Ghost doesn't come to shout you. He doesn't come to make you feel good. He doesn't come to lift your hands up. But know this, when the Holy Ghost comes upon you, he is changing something about you. Oh, my 